Good morning. Welcome to the uh, 2025 operating budget meeting. Um, if everyone would please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. And uh, I would ask our controller, who's worked so hard on the budget, to please lead us in the pledge. Thank you. Okay, let us begin. Uh, we have a public hearing this morning to consider the adoption of the 2025 operating budget. And I'd ask the town clerk to please read the hearing notice. Item number one, town board adoption of the town of Islip 2025 operating budget. Okay, um, at this time, I don't have any cards. Is there anyone who wishes to address the board with respect to the preliminary budget? If you do, this is your time to do so. Uh, and you will have three minutes to speak. Is there anyone who wishes to address the board? Okay, I guess we have uh, a lot of pleased people out there with what we are proposing today. Um, hearing none, our public portion is now concluded, and I'll call upon the controller to please come forward and give us a short presentation overview on what we are considering here today. Apologies, my book is upside down. I'm going to lose my notes. Joseph Ludwig, controller, 401 Main Street, town of Isa. Good morning, everybody. Uh, let me be the first to say that on a day this nice, this is the last place we should all be. Um, but unfortunately, we have some real business to do, and what you have in front of you is the proposed preliminary budget for 2025. Um, this has been one of the more brutal budgets we've had to deal with because we've had a lot of things fighting against us, and I do want to say, uh, before I give acknowledgments to everybody else who helped create the budget, I do want to say thank you to all the board members for the questions, the interest, um, quite possibly the most amount of questions and conversations I've had on any budget, whether I was in Huntington or down here. So I appreciate the interest and I appreciate the concern in trying to find out exactly what it is we're doing and why we're at where we're at today. Um, in the very simple overview, um, at the last board meeting, the town board, uh, we voted to pierce the tax cap because unfortunately there was things that we just could not afford within those confines. Specifically, without getting overly detailed and not in any particular order, but we've had recent changes in the state retirement system. We are tier six members are now getting tier five benefits. That was a million dollar cost to us. That was not expected. Our mortgage tax is down over $7 million over the last two years. And Councilman Renzo, I know you Joe, and I spoke about that. Yes, I'm sorry. If I, if I would, I, I just would like to, because it was a million dollar impact and totally out of our control, but the adjustment to the pension system that was done in Albany originally adopted tier six as a cost saving measure, and then what happened? So it, tier five, <clears throat> excuse me, the way the state kind of works is they usually come up with a tier and invariably very quickly they come up with a replacement tier. So we had tier four that was established, and if one knows it better, great, probably 30 years ago. And then it came up with tier five, which changed the benefit slightly. You had to kick in on, from the employee standpoint, you had to contribute for more. And then they realized, you know, we could have done better, and they came up with Tier 6. And Tier 6 was a significant difference over Tier 5. You had to pay in, I think, a higher percentage for the entire life. Some of your overtime, if you hit a certain cap, was not pensionable. Many other things. And it came to the attention of, I guess, the, the state where there was a feeling of inequity between Tier 5 and Tier 6 of such magnitude that municipalities were claiming they could not get competent Tier 6 people. And so therefore, as a result of the legislature, they went and they made those changes to now give all those tier five benefits to the tier six people. So it's not just a going forward thing, we now have to get caught up on the amount of benefits we should have been paying in for and hadn't been. 
That's why it's a million dollar increase. And then obviously an increase going forward as we project what 2025's pension cost is gonna be. Thank so you. It was a compounding effect, yes. Um, you know, kind of sticking with the pension and it's something that predates me. I've been here approximately 20 years. Oh God, this seems way too long. But it predates me and going way back when at one point in time, town of Isop had amongst the highest paid workforce, blue collar, white collar. And sometime 2004, six, if anybody's here who can remember, they can correct me on the date. But white collar and blue collar kind of got screwed over when they went into negotiations and they went six years without a step increase and without a raise increase. And I believe they all took a one week lag. So just for discussion, let's just say that was 2004. We have been fighting that battle ever since to try to get a, a decent wage back to our employees. And again, with the support of the town board and the conversations I've had, I know it's something we're all looking forward, but that's a significant increase into the budget that had not been there previously. Not trying to fix everything, because it can't be done in one year practically, but we have to start making that inroad to start getting the employees back up. We have had issues in retention. We're great at training people. And within two years, they're off to Brookhaven, they're off to Huntington, they're off to another township that's paying entry level almost what our top level happens to be. So all those things are getting factored into this budget, um, which is kind of the reason why we had, to, had no choice but to pierce the cap, which is what we had done. And that's all included in the budget that you have today. That is a very, very simplistic way of looking at it. Um, I could stay in here all day and continue to go through this, um, but if you guys, I'd rather hear if you guys have any additional questions, and I would rather answer those. I think that would be more helpful and beneficial. Uh, Joe, can you just touch on uh, the reason for the uh, two adjustments? Sure, I was gonna get to that if we didn't have any other questions. So in addition to the budget that you guys have, there are two, yes, two preliminary adjustments. One is impacting the Central Islip Ambulance District after they had submitted their budget, they continued to look, they were able to find some additional changes and they were able to give that to us. So that's why you see a tax cut and a savings off their contract. The other savings you have, and I apologize, I'm gonna forget the community over on Fire Island. So again, one of the things that are increasing our cost this year, the Army Corps of Engineer, who has historically done the beach renourishment, and Councilman McElway, I believe this is your district. So uh, Army Corps traditionally had taken care of the beach renourishments. The community members over on Fire Island had whatever conversation they had with them beginning of the summer, I believe it was, and Madam Supervisor, I know we were in your office for this. And they were told by the Army Corps, <clears throat> excuse me, Army Corps is out of money. They are no longer taking care of Long Island. So our communities, as well as the Brookhaven communities, I believe, have decided, hey, let's start self-taxing so we can build up our reserve so when we need a beach renourishment, they'll theoretically have the money in hand. It does not mean that we're not gonna have to go out and borrow additional, but ideally they're gonna have it in hand so we won't have to. That's also part of the reason why our expenses have gone up. It's also amendment number two. One of the districts realized the number they had given us originally to increase their tax levy by was higher than they wanted to do, so they asked if they could reduce it, and that's the number that you folks see in front of you today. So just to embellish on that a little bit, um, the FEMA, I believe, said they would only fund beach, beach nourishment every five years. And there's no way to predict when a storm may come. So the thinking of the residents there was they wanted to create kind of a rainy day fund, if you will, uh, have monies there waiting that if something happened and they needed to do that beach renourishment prior to that five year window, that they would have some money in reserve to do so. Exactly, and, and the other issue with FEMA is this, for FEMA to kick in, usually there has to be an expenditure dollar amount. So we may have a beach that lost, but it's not enough to kick in for a FEMA declaration. So there's a lot of things that do kind of um, go against us when it comes to trying to be set and be prepared to take care of the beaches over there. And that increase or adjustment is just for those particular taxpayers? Correct. In those districts? Correct. Okay, um, did you wanna touch on the capital now or just do it in one fell swoop? Unfortunately, and you know, as I kind of led with this being one of the more brutal budgets I've ever worked on, the unfortunate casualty of that was the capital budget, which I have not been able to give it its legitimate um, view. And instead of trying to put forth a document that I know is not really vetted properly, 
Um, it would probably make more sense, and I will defer to the town attorney for the proper terminology. We can open the hearing, close the, is it adjourn the hearing? And then we'll reserve the vote until the November 19th meeting. At that point, I'll have a proper budget that I can present to all the board members with the justifications and why the department's what they wanted. Okay, that makes and sense. Before I say anything else, I did, because I kind of alluded to it before, I do want to thank all the department heads and all the commissioners. Um, like I said, this was not an easy budget. There was always, as there is every year, oh, can we do this? We want to try this. We want to try this. And with the numbers we were at, the answer was no. They had to go back and continue to sharpen their pencils. And again, I know the council people, you guys have met with a bunch of the departments. Um, so again, all the commissioners really do deserve as much credit as anybody for coming up with a budget, understanding the financial constraints that we were under. Okay, thank you very much, Joe. I, I appreciate that. And as you said, the cooperation of all the department heads, because the mandate was a zero increase, you know, in their budgets, and they really sharpened their pencils and worked really hard. And I personally want to thank the members of the town board, because this has been a most collaborative process in the fact that they have, you know, really drilled down, gotten into the weeds, looked at the budget, met with the departments, met with the controller. We were all anxious to try to see if we could minimize the impact to the taxpayer, yet at, at the very most present a responsible budget, you know, for the town. So um, I just want to put that out there and thank Great. everyone for all of their, their help. Um, are there any questions at this point for the controller? Councilman O'Connor. Question for the town attorney. I have a motion to amend the budget. Is it appropriate to do that now or after we close the public hearing? Are there any questions for the controller? Uh, yes, I do have one. Uh, as uh, supervisor was mentioning, trying to minimize the impact on the taxpayer as it is now with this amendment that you just submitted, uh, what would be the impact on the taxpayer? So when we discuss the, the tax increase, we always talk about our three major funds because that's the, the three funds that provide the bulk of the services. We kind of exclude all the special districts. And so the budget that was presented, um, sorry, let me rephrase that. The two amendments that are in there are special district amendments. So the numbers we had talked about, the 9.3%, $109, I think the number was, those have not changed. So just for the record, the impact to the average taxpayer annually would be $109? I think it was 109 rounded, yes. Okay. Are there any other questions or comments for the controller? Okay. Hearing none, I will entertain a motion to approve the adjustments uh, to the 2025 preliminary budget and adopt the 2025 operating budget. I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. We have a motion and a second to close the public hearing. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> Opposed? Okay, the public hearing is closed. So we have uh, resolution number one uh, to uh, make those adjustments. I have a motion to am amend the preliminary budget based on the information provided to us. Uh, the preliminary budget called for uh, assigning from the appropriate fund balance $11,850,000 uh, for the general fund and $1,245,202 for the part-town fund. My motion is to increase the appropriate appropriated fund balance uh, to $13,850,000 in the general fund and $1,000,000 $400,000 in the Park Town Fund. Uh, we have a motion. Is there a second? second? Okay. On the motion, I'd ask the controller to come back up. Um, with this proposed amendment to adjust the amount of money coming from the fund balance, increasing uh, $2 million from the fund balance, um, does that uh, put us in any kind of jeopardy? with the rating agencies as to the amount that is recommended that you have in there for fund balance. And my other question is, with this adjustment, what does it take that $109 annual 
increase to the average taxpayer to? What does it reduce it to? Okay, so I'm going to start with question number two because that's the easier one to answer. Um, I believe when we had the discussion yesterday, and the council folks can correct me if I got it wrong, I believe it brought the number down to ninety dollars. Eighty roughly. Yeah. Um, the first question, Madam Supervisor, is a much harder one to answer because it's going to be somewhat contingent upon the results of operations in 2024. So the standard rule of thumb uh, within the financial community of townships, and I know this came up yesterday with Councilman O'Connor, we are different than school districts that are required by law to not exceed a certain percentage. Townships are not required, are not under that same restriction. So the standard rule of thumb is 10%. I have in my travels between auditor and controller seen some municipalities actually have a 20% fund balance policy. We try to keep 10%. Um, with the way the budget is structured, we need to keep about $13 million in our unrestricted fund balance number. Not knowing what results of operations are going to do for 2024, we could be right at that $13 million number or with the additional $2 million taken out, or we could be at you know, 15. So we're still going to be close. Um, if results of operations for 2025 don't hit the numbers that we're expecting, and I'll allude to the mortgage tax, if the mortgage tax doesn't rebound, and Councilman Lorenzo, I hope what you've read is correct, and it does rebound, but if it doesn't, then that continues to erode the fund balance, and then we do run the risk of being at less than 10%. Unfortunately, as we sit here today, November 7th, there's no way for me to say, because I won't know results of operations for 24 until probably March or April. Um, how much has the mortgage tax gone down over the past two years? So in 2020, so just for everyone's knowledge, we collect the mortgage tax via the county. <coughs> um, and because of the timing of their checks, we actually collect from October through September. It's not a fiscal year. It's not a calendar year. It's a weird year. So in 2022, our number was 17 plus million. Uh, last year, we were just over 12. And this year, we'll be lucky to hit 10. The budget, I believe, was 11. I didn't see it dropping as much as it has. Again, Councilman, whatever God you pray to, please pray that the mortgage tax comes back. Um, keeping in mind that there's always a delay from a closing to when we actually get the money. So if the world does not rebound, well, fingers crossed that it does, those are the, some of those potential pitfalls. You know, God forbid, again, not rooting for a natural disaster, but any storm that comes through next year, nor'easter, bad flooding, anything that's not a FEMA declaration but causes Commissioner Owens to send everybody out on double time and everything, that just erodes at that fund balance number. So again, when we had our conversation yesterday, the highway fund had come up, and I said, don't touch highway fund. We've lucked out by not having bad snow. And it was fair point. We'll leave highway alone. Those are the, some of the reasons why we keep the fund balance level where we're at. And I you know, will kind of allude back to Hurricane Sandy when that came through. I believe this town spent over $10 million in its cleanup. If we didn't have the fund balance, we wouldn't have been able to do it the way we did it. And again, all credit to Commissioner Owens, but we were one of the first townships cleaned up back running. We put all those resources into it because we had the availability because we had those funds. So again, long story short, Madam Supervisor, and I'm sorry because I'm not really answering your question, it's a great unknown, it's a risk. Okay. Um, thanks, Joe, I appreciate that. Okay, um, so if you could please repeat that. There's a motion and a second, I call for a vote on the motion. Okay, uh, so the motion now is just to amend the budget decreasing the fund balance and uh, in those two areas. Question, would that uh, be hold on, open uh, to- Councilman, I'm sorry, I just, I just want to make sure that everyone's we're actually increasing the fund balance use. Oh, I'm which sorry. Which is increasing well, the tax decreasing the reserve. Decreasing you said it backwards, I just want right. to make sure we're all clear. Sorry, Councilman. Yep. Yeah, uh, would that leave the door open for any further negotiations so to see if we can further down the uh, tax increase, the proposed tax increase as amended? Uh, no, I think once we adopt it here, that's what it is. Um, and so that $2 million uh, additional use of the fund balance would, just so that everyone is clear, lower that tax increase by about, Joe, did you give us that about figure? About 3%, I think. What was the number? 
Um, in total, between the two adjustments, it brought the $109 down to 90. 90. Correct okay. me. Six, and six so point seven six five yeah. something like that percentage from the nine three down to the six. Bleh, 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 bleh. I, I apologize for not remembering the exact percentage. Okay, so around nineteen dollars. I think people understand dollars and cents more same, than yeah. they do percentages. But uh, so nineteen dollars over the course of the year less right. than it would have been a buck fifty a month. I guess is what that would translate to uh, if we reduce. Uh, our fund balance by an additional two million. Increase the use, yes, yes. Yes. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. Uh, roll call on the on the motion. Councilman O'Connor. Aye. Councilman Guadron. No. Councilman Lorenzo. Aye. Councilman McGillway. Aye. Madam Supervisor. No. I'd make a motion to uh, adopt the preliminary budget as amended. Second. second. We have a motion by Councilman um, O'Connor, second by Councilman McGillway to adopt the uh, operating budget. budget. Thank you. To adopt the operating budget uh, with that amendment. Roll call on the, uh, the motion. <coughs> Councilman O'Connor. Aye. Councilman Guadron. Aye. Councilman Lorenzo? Aye. Councilman McGillway? Aye. Madam Supervisor? I'll abstain. I'd make a motion to adjourn uh, or, or I guess a table uh, resolution number two on the capital budget until we have more information. We have a motion uh, by Councilman O'Connor and I'll second that motion to uh, adjourn the adoption of the capital budget. Uh, on the motion, roll call. Councilman O'Connor. Aye. Councilman Guadron. Aye. Councilman Lorenzo. Aye. Councilman McGillway. Aye. Madam Supervisor. Yes. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Since there is no other business to come before us, we stand adjourned. Thank you so much.